welcome to the conclusion of West Side Story here from Tyler State Park West. Nine more holes to find out who the winner is of the MPO field. Thanks to our presenting sponsors, Cosmic Disc Golf, D-Town Disc Golf, and Reaper Disc Supply. I'm Dave Oster here with Brett Hensley. Brett, how's it going? Doing well, Dave. Looking forward to see uh, who comes out on top at the end of this round. It's like we're going to get into the back nine. We got hole 10, which is a 372 foot par three. It's going to go straight up the gut here. You don't want to fade off too hard left. There's some road OB over there, um, but really the miss is kind of the maybe turn something over a little too far to the right um, as opposed to missing left into that rough. It's like Rob, a little bit of an early release there. Front nine, we saw Rob extending his lead, shooting the only one under par so far. But the back nine here, West Side introduces a lot of elevation and probably longer holes on average, would you say, to uh, challenge these players? Yeah, for sure. The back, we're going to see um, some additional par fours and some pretty long par threes as well. Nice Dylan shot, with a pretty nice drive, fading out just a little bit, but he'll be maybe circle's edge or closer for his birdie look. Oh, great tree and kick there. Beautiful tree kick. <laughs> Take those when you can get them, huh? Absolutely. Rob's throwing a judge here. I have a tricky putt to save his par. Oh, that looked great. Very close. Not able to capitalize on uh, a great tree kick, but probably lucky just to be there after a pretty early release. Rick's dealing with some harsh rough over there. Yeah, good effort. Dylan. Have him go steep hyzer putt, almost making it count, but the Rob, Rob making the par, another, very nice. Another solid putt from Rob. Yeah, if he keeps that up, he's going to be tough to catch. Everybody else tapping in their pars. A little playful there. Trying to see who goes first as we move over to 11. Par 3, 385 feet. We have pretty much a straight shot off the tee with a little bit of a left to right that you want to start fading towards in the end and get close to or potentially even over this high log pile that's guarding the green. Really only ways to walk through it are far left and far right. So the disc likely will want to fly over the middle straight then of course you're risking going too far long into the rough so pretty difficult hole elevated basket as well so we'll see how these players tackle it yeah rob showing us a pretty good line i can feed back oh it looks like it just got hung up there at the end yeah that was looking real clean big backhand turnover straight starting to straighten out It's going to be a little flippy, but that's getting to the ground quick. But he's up there. That'll a little look. It's a tough putt. So you got to got to put it over those log. So you know you're not many people are going to be able to get the drive over the logs. So a lot of birdie putts are kind of coming from that log pile, and then you're putting onto that elevated basket, making it really difficult. Yeah, I wonder if everybody is really trying to get over that log pile or just trying to get close to it to give themselves that long look. Because the log pile is pretty well within the circle. So you could have a circle putt inside, outside of the log pile. Yeah, absolutely. It takes a really 
great turnover shot to kind of uh, to get it over that pile. I think a lot of people are trying to get get to it and, and take the long putt for birdie. Dylan, not quite able to get all the way to the circle, but gives it a good effort hitting the pole and sitting right under it. You can see Rick had a pretty solid, and Rob, I got, yeah, he got the closest here. He's still uh, outside the log pile. Let's see if you can get a rare birdie on this hole. Wow. Does it again. The putter stays hot. Into the sun, too. Staring at the camera. Matt to save his par. Ooh. I think he got nubbed there. Yeah, just a little low, but you like to see those go in. The back edge of the disc catching the nub on these baskets. Hit and change, but not able to finish going through. Good putt there by Rick to save his par. And it looks like Rob's opening up a pretty commanding lead. Yeah, certainly quite a few holes to play, but something definitely has to change in terms of momentum for uh, these guys to start catching them. All right, on to hole 12, par 3, 207 feet. It's going to play a little bit longer because your tee shot's a bit uphill. Uh, you want to throw something that's going to go straight up the fairway, fade out a little bit left at the end, but not too hard because uh, you could fade out right down the hill into some really nasty rough. Looks like Rob's throwing a little bit of a flex, but I think he got knocked down by one of the trees on the left side of the fairway. It's one of those lines for the righty backhand where you're throwing it high, you're throwing it probably on a little bit of an Anheuser angle, where if you catch the tree and, like you were saying, the wrong side, it can kick pretty far into the left side. And there's a lot of air space with it being a sloping right to left hill. Rick played the right side and seemed to fight through most of it. But as you can see, it's definitely playing a lot longer than 207. Absolutely, and a lot of fallen logs right near the circle to uh, kind of prevent him getting real close. It was a little bit low out of Dylan's hand there. I'm trying to flex it up there. Looked pretty good. He caught the bottom of that tree it'll be a tough putt yeah common design it seems on at least the west side here at tyler having a tee pad throwing uphill to the uh, then flattened off part of the fairway creates probably a uh, definitely less common pretty unique kind of flight of a disc that you need to create and it's not all the same shot we saw um, a couple holes earlier similar where the par fourth, I believe it was hole nine, you have to get to the landing zone and then have another strong, long shot. Yeah. Here you kind of can get to that landing zone. I think they're right right there in circle two. Solid bit. I was looking good the whole way. Yeah. Oh, Rob came up a little short there. A little chink in the armor. Oh, but these guys aren't able to take advantage. Yeah, just maybe just an unfortunate kind of lapse in uh, concentration there. Got to go through your routine even on those sh short putts. Absolutely, every stroke counts, even the close ones. You know, as you were saying about the west side and elevation, I, that's what I love so much about Tyler. You have 
two completely different 18 hole courses. You know, east is a little bit flatter, west is a lot more elevation. We'll move on to uh, hole 13, which is a par three, 270 feet. Again, it's kind of another tunnel gap shot. Um, you want your disc to uh, finish slightly to the right here. There's a lot of rough on the left and right side. So any sort of fairway hit is usually pretty good. It'll leave you with a putt. So that came out a little early out of Rick's hand and caught a tree on the left side fairway. Forehand's a good play here too. Yeah, whatever you have that you can throw 300 feet, 275 feet straight. I hit the fairway, just came out a little low. Definitely not the worst mistake to make. Uh, another common theme here, Tyler's dense rough even in this time of year where there's no leaves and we'll we'll get to see rob trying to battle that smart play just pitching out but if you get off the fairway at all you're probably going at least two strokes whereas um, dylan played it low to where if any mistake did happen it would at least still stay in the fairway um, and i'd guess that decision would probably get him at least one stroke here on rob yeah, this is one hole where I think you can disc down. You know, you can throw, you know, I throw my Comet and I kind of just try to get into circle two and, you know, try to make the putt from there. At least guarantees you a three. Whereas if you get off the fairway on this hole, you know, you're going to be scrambling for that three. Yeah, it's kind of that risk reward thing. This hole being not super far, you kind of want to go for it. But like we said, it's still a high difficulty to get all the way there. Shh. On a yeah. pretty much dead straight line. And you can see Rick there was kind of on the fairway, but he's still going to have to have a circle two putt for saving his bar. Good shot there. Tyler will certainly test your scramble game. Absolutely. Good uh, overhand scuba, it looked like. A rare C2 miss from Stas. Yeah, we've kind of just come to expect him to make those, but oh, too big from they there. are still a very difficult thing to make with high frequency. For sure. Cut there from Matt to clean up his bogey. Time to get off the fairway on this hole. It's a really tough three. Dylan made a pretty easy par from just kind of throwing his drive into the ground, staying on the fairway, simple upshot, so you don't lose a stroke. And I believe that will be two strokes over Rob that uh, Dylan is getting as he gets back-to-back -back doubles. As quickly as he got on fire, he seems to have cooled off. Luckily, he has a pretty decent buffer. Um, what do we have here in hole 14? Hole 14, par 3, 314 feet. You're throwing downhill to a blind green. Um, you want to throw something that's going to kind of flip up a little bit and ride uh, hyzer all the way down to those two guardian trees protecting the basket. And this is another one of those pin placements that we've been talking about that are pretty evil um, in that they're so close to a tree that unless you are basically past the basket you have zero look at it coming back um, but knowing that that's kind of the strategy you have to throw past the basket if you know that you're going to try to get a putt for birdie on this hole yeah and rick's giving it the height that you need to get down there that's, oh really nice shot there as long as uh yep. he's not obstructed by the tree he should have pretty easy putt This one's got the height too. Might be fading out a little early. It gets a really nice skip. So that'll cruise down for an open look. Yeah, I think it, it's a slight bend to the left and then it, right at the end it kind of hooks harder, especially in this pin position. So 
fading out and getting far enough is not the worst uh, spot to be as opposed to right there yeah. 20 feet but you have a tree right between you and the basket I think Rob would have been parked if he didn't hit that branch yeah the layups on this green are a little tricky just the, it continues to slope down so if you your putter catches any edge it's going to roll Oh. oh, good bid. Fortunately, just a little might have low. gotten nubbed again, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's been a little low today. Rick having the opposite problem, just a little high. Let's see if Rob can uh, card the loon birdie. Very close. Straddling out as far as he can, still having to throw on a steep hyzer and just not able to get it to come back left enough. And that's really the trick with this pin placement. Yeah, there's good, two. Good challenge for these players. Absolutely. Those two trees are just massive guardians. Come back from Rick. Definitely seems a little bit disappointed there. Had the opportunity for the birdie just a little bit high. Fortunate to make the probably similar distance comebacker. Yeah, we're starting to run out of holes to make up their strokes on Rob. Yeah, Rob did stop the bleeding at six strokes with uh, four holes to go. With hole 15, the next up, par four, 400. 27 feet, really a good two shot par four. Try to, trying to get it around this landing zone where there's a couple of very large trees. Left side is more open, but you can kind of land in a few different spots to have a gap. And then it gets more uphill, uh, playing to, I believe, the shorter of the few pin positions. So certainly reachable in two. Take that caught something and put him into the left side rough. That's more for what you're looking for. Absolutely. Right in between a couple of those trees. Have a clean approach for a second shot. Turning the camera. Turning the catch around, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Might be slightly off the fairway, though. Yeah, flip. Rob's going to fade out into the left side rough. First two. Throw here. Looks like he's going to have to go overhand, maybe. Yeah. I think this hole feels a lot more open than it is because the last few holes have been so finesse and a little bit tighter that you get a little bit of room and you feel like you want to just rip it, but it still is a fairly sh specific line you got to hit and in the woods. Yeah, especially that second shot. If you can get on the fairway with your tee shot, it opens up as we're going to see Rick here going uphill. He's fading out a little early, but... He's pin high. Nice shot by Rick. On the edge. Well, that cleared the rough. Do you remember if the long position on this hole is still a par four or if it's a par five? It's a par five. So, and you have the, um, yeah. the, the elevated basket as well by the road. So it definitely brings in uh, an extra throw and sometimes an extra couple of putts. Yeah, I can remember how hard it feels to get up that last 100, 150 feet of the hill has been for players we've seen in the past. So this short position, certainly good challenge with the one stroke less, but luckily not having to go all the way to the top of the hill. Ooh, oh, wow, it's catching metal. Almost back on that train, yeah. Look at a nice birdie. I think Rick's going to card our only birdie. I believe you're right. Getting one stroke closer. Oh, 
No, I stand corrected. Oh, that's right. Matt, Matt as well also, played it really well. Yeah, long drive and just pitched up and over. Got it pretty close. All right, we got full 16. This basket is placed off to the right, so you want to throw something um, either forehand or right hand, backhand, turnover. I think Rick's going to probably throw a flippy putter here, let it ride to the right side. Got to beat all those trees, though. He's, he's throwing his AVR. And look at that thing flip over. That was a great shot, but oh, yeah. that last little tree over there that he probably can't even see. Yeah, I think maybe you can see the top of the basket from the tee pad, but definitely not the bottom. And that kind of depth perception is lost because you're throwing down that rolling hill, making it difficult to see all the way, all the obstacles once you get down there. Yeah, the basket's also placed on a, um, the top of a hill over there. So if you have a long putt and you decide to run it, you can potentially roll into the road and take an OB stroke. So you really want to get close to this basket. As Rob uh, demonstrates, that was a great shot. Yeah, checking up just in time. He leaves down. It's kind of tough to see exactly where the edge of the road is, but I think that's closer than it even looked. And Dylan didn't like that out of the hand. I think he turned it over, beat it out a little left, and it's kind of in a position where you, it's tough to run the putt. distance to run it from see what Dylan decides to do give it a pretty healthy bid but you see that roll there yep that's he's the risk safe. like you were saying so he stayed safe though great straddle from Rick two in a row Trying to put a little Rob is pressure even closer. on Rob. Yeah. yeah, but Rob's got pretty much a tap in. Great tee shot. Yeah, at least keep it interesting here the last few holes. Yeah, we're going to go to um, the only two field holes on the west side to close out the tournament. That's right. Starting with hole 17. Plus three, 327 feet. Could go dead straight. Try to get the gap that you can see right from the tee pad. Up and over the right side is also uh, a play, but you need a lot more than 320 feet of power. Or the backhand turnover or forehand around the left side. There's also gaps to access the green from there. Rick going the high, wide right side. Just catching the top of the tree to miss and falling down 150 feet or so. But got past the tree, so he'll have a clean approach. Well, that's an interesting line I had never really seen before. I see a lot of these backhand turnovers here that Rob's throwing. Looks like he's going to get full flight out of that, and it's parked. What a beautiful line. Just the gentlest Turnover, fading to straight, puts it to two feet. Rob Stoss is not going to break. That's more the power you need, yeah, maybe yeah. even more power, to get kind of that stall hyzer past the basket and come back. Um, this basket really isn't far. The challenge is obviously missing the line of trees. So if you have the power, you can kind of cheat the hole a little bit. And both Dylan and Matt got over it, but uh, we'll still have some long putts. Good up shot there by Rick. Maybe trying to give it a little bit of a bid. Wow, what a putt. That could be a shot of the round contender there. Yeah, through some of those trees, 
Absolutely. Easily circle two, maybe 45 feet downhill. Great putt by Matt. Let's see what Dylan's trying to match. Looks like it came out of his hand a little wobbly there. And Rick's still out. And Rob's practically under the basket. Yeah, it looked like he was no more than two or three feet. Really, really an incredible shot. No need for a highlight putt there. No, sir. Just taking care of business. All right, last hole. Hole 18, par 4, 631 feet. This hole usually plays a little bit more difficult, as you see the field's typically OB, but in the tournament, there was no OB placed on the field. So a lot of the tee shots are going to probably go right straight into the field, which will leave um, about maybe a 300, 350-foot upshot to the basket, which is placed on top of the hill. Um, so you want to kind of land your upshot as close as you can to the basket to not have to deal with uh, any roll away potential from a long putt. And as I say that, Rob actually pulled his drive over onto the fairway, which is interesting. Um, we'll see if some of these other players actually play it onto the field. Yeah, it lands a perfect shot on the traditional way to play it, <laughs> despite having a giant field to the left to land in. And here's the play that I see most people taking, just trying to get as far left and up the hill as they can. That's a great spot there. Yeah, Matt seems to have a pretty decent arm on him. Hasn't been able to pull it out on too many holes, but when we've seen it, he has good distance. Yeah, absolutely. I, I haven't had a chance to play with Matt yet. Um, I've seen him at a lot of different events and Definitely want to uh, get on a card with him. Seems like he can uh, crush, and I don't think he's been playing for that long. Rick and Dylan going with more of the full distance flex line to get as much distance. But I think, like you said, up the hill left side definitely makes their second shot easier, being more ele more of a similar elevation to what yeah. the basket is. Absolutely. I think where Rob is, he's going to have to throw more um, up the hill, you know, up, upward trajectory, but should still be well within his range. We can put one close here. Um, this looks like he's in the circle. I'm not sure if, I think those orange flags marked where Obi typically is. Yeah. That absolutely not necessarily the edge of the circle so yeah to tell and you can see how far downhill rob was basically throwing mm -hmm. up a looked like 45 degree angle as opposed to matt here throwing a lot closer to flat good shot by matt Have a few um tester putts here to close out the round Dylan will have a tap in par. Let's see if Rob can close it out in style here. Just a little high. Couldn't give us one more highlight putt. <laughs> um, it's just a little bit low. It's been a nice birdie to close out the round. Last birdie look. Oh, another basket hit. Had quite a few of those, yeah, this round. And there it is, par to take down the West Side Story. Rob Stoss at minus five. What a round. And it looks like Rick's tapping in with his mouth putt. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Congrats to Rob. Great playing six strokes over second place. We'll take a look at the, uh, I'd say a full leaderboard, but it was just these four players in the MPO field this round. But the shot of the round appropriately goes to Rob Stoss for that beautiful backhand flex line on 17 to put it to four feet. 
all these guys, fun to watch them play. Um, like you said, you wanted to get on the card with some of these guys, maybe will one day. I gotta keep practicing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I got a long ways to get there, but maybe one day. Um, again, thank you everybody for watching. We have open sponsorship spots for the upcoming 2024 season. You can find the information for that below or send us a message. Thanks to our current and Patreon fans. Thanks to you for watching. Um, thanks, Brett, for joining me in the virtual booth today. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much, Dave. We have one more off-season tournament coming up before we kick off the 2024 season. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.